In this video, you'll learn what is meant by the term derived demand and why the demand for labor is an example of derived demand. Also, we'll consider why the labor demand curve is downward sloping. The demand for labor is derived from the demand for the good or service that labor is producing. Derived demand simply means that demand for a resource is the direct result of the demand for the firm's output. By definition, the demand for labor is the amount of labor a firm is willing and able to employ at a given wage rate at a specific point in time. Let's now use this understanding to construct our market labor demand curve. In a perfectly competitive market for labor, the demand curve is downward sloping. There is an inverse relationship between wages and the quantity of labor employed. This is because firms would prefer to employ more labor at lower wage rates and less labor at higher wage rates. This can be demonstrated by the fall in wages from W1 to W2, resulting in an increase in the quantity of labor demanded from Q1 to Q2. If we hold all other costs and revenues constant, a fall in the price of labor would increase the profitability of firms. Thus, firms would employ more labor at lower wage rates than higher wage rates. If labor becomes more expensive, firms may decide to substitute labor with comparatively less expensive capital and machinery. Also consider what happens as firms expand output. They're adding additional units of labor to fixed amounts of capital and thus experience diminishing returns at some point. Therefore, they would not be willing to pay high wage rates to increasing units of labor. In the same way, consumers would pay less as their utility diminishes over time. Firms receive diminishing returns from additional units of labor and thus would only be willing to employ more labor at lower wage rates. By now, you should have a better understanding of the concept of derived demand also, you should have a grasp of why the demand curve for labor is downward sloping. As we move into the next video, we'll look at shifts of the labor demand curve. As always, post any questions or comments below and let's see if we can figure them out together. That's us done for now and I will see you in the next one.